Greg Gutfeld's remarks tap into a growing sense of unease about crime, safety, and the glaring inaction of political leaders. Many people today share the sentiment of frustration, feeling utterly powerless as crime surges and the justice system stumbles. Gutfeld's critique isn't just about statistics. It's a visceral call to address the raw fear and anxiety many feel in a society where crimes go unpunished and where justice seems elusive. Crime reporting is down <laughs> because no one's reporting the crime because they know that when the criminal gets out, which is almost in a few hours, he's going to come for you. So in New York alone, I think it's like 70 percent of property crime isn't reported and something like 55 percent of violent crime isn't reported. Also, the statistics that the FBI uses aren't taken seriously because they're limited. They don't pass the smell test. But you know what's worse than the smell test? The seal, the C and the feel test. People can feel the crime when they're when they're victims and they can see it if they haven't felt it. You can make the case for a drop in crime, but you better show your work. You can't just parrot cherry pick stats handed to you from someone else who hasn't experienced, felt or seen the crime. Because I think the thing is, in politics, since crime became part of a political plank, it's almost treated like a recreational belief, almost like the climate debate or fracking or pronouns where you can push false data and stupid, shallow opinions and not be concerned whether it impacts lives. But this is a narrative that directly impacts people's lives because you're denying reality, which then denies relief, denies experience and pain. Uh, that actually hurts people. You have fewer police, then you have to fund the police, then you have uh, incited groups of people who feel that they can go into 7-Elevens and destroy them because nothing's going to happen. You have people not reporting crime because they know nothing's going to happen. So I would say to people that like the David Mears of the world, read more than a paragraph from the AP. You did a disservice to a lot of people when you said crime was down. One of Gutfeld's most striking points is the notion that crime goes unreported because people fear retaliation. This fear reveals a deeper issue, the erosion of trust in both law enforcement and the system meant to protect them. When criminals are released too swiftly, only to reoffend, it signals a breakdown in the very institution meant to safeguard law-abiding citizens. People value a strong, reliable justice system one that ensures public safety and defends personal freedoms. Yet, when people hesitate to report crimes, it's a clear sign that confidence in these systems is waning. This weakening of trust shatters the social contract, where individuals rely on the state for protection in exchange for their compliance with the law. If that contract breaks, the resulting fear and uncertainty threaten to unravel social norms and civic responsibility. Gutfeld also zeroes in on a provocative idea, that crime statistics are manipulated for political purposes. Data is curated, narratives twisted, all to fit ideological goals. Progressive policies, like defunding the police or reducing criminal penalties, Gutfeld argues, have led to a noticeable rise in crime. Yet, despite these consequences, the reality is often downplayed or ignored for the sake of political expediency. This denial, he suggests, reflects a deeper kind of malice, where political leaders and media dismiss the lived experiences of ordinary people to further their own agendas. Ignoring the reality of crime doesn't just hurt the victims. It weakens the bond of trust between citizens and those in power. As that trust erodes, people feel increasingly alienated, as if their fears and pain are invisible to those in charge. At the heart of Gutfeld's criticism lies a deeply conservative value, responsibility. The failure to report crimes because nothing will be done points to a broader societal injustice. Accountability, both for criminals and political leaders, is essential for the rule of law to function. When criminals evade justice and leaders ignore the real impact of crime, the very fabric of society begins to tear. This lack of responsibility breeds a sense of helplessness among citizens. If people believe that their actions won't make a difference, or that justice will remain out of reach, they may withdraw entirely. Such indifference can lead to a dangerous tipping point, where individuals no longer feel invested in the system and, worse, no longer believe they have control over their lives.